how to contour custom shapes in Photoshop. Now I'm using 220, but you could do the same, 219, 218, etc. Create something like that. Go back to a fresh document, select the custom shape tool. Now, not all custom shapes work well with this approach. You've got a really nice solid shape, such like a diamond or something, works fine. But if you've got a very complex custom shape, it'll probably look a mess. Just use shape. And the fill color doesn't particularly matter. You can just go for gray or blue or green, whatever. Apply it in the center. Make it fairly small, because what you don't want to do is go over the edge. So just create a nice small shape there. Now I'm going to be using actions. I'm going to save all this as an action. So layers and actions via the window menu. So once you've done that, you can start your action now. Just go down to the bottom, click the little plus to create a new action. Record. So go to the layer menu and then down to a layer style. And the key one here is stroke. So set stroke on. Now you can change the size. You can see the, the stroke added there. Just around there, you can see the contour design there. Now it's not the best contour. It's obviously fairly rounded. It's obviously not looking particularly like a diamond. It's similar to a diamond, but it's not. That's just obviously Photoshop, how it creates it. Now you can change the size. You can see the size there. Key one there for below is the outside option for position. And use a gradient and use style as shape burst. The other settings, angle, scale, will have no effect whatsoever. Now, click on the gradient. So I want to edit that gradient. It's a very, very basic gradient made up of a number of stops. Just click on that. Expand the gradient panel so you can work with it. If you've really got it very small, it's a lot harder to work with. And you can just quickly add stops. You can change the color of the stops. Now I've gone for a very strong black at that far end. The key way of doing this, I always find, is just select, say, like the red, and then just go along, add all the reds first. So you just click all the way along the bottom bar, then click on the black, and then go all the way along in between. So you can create this lovely, sort of contour design and at the far end go with the red now of course i'm going with red but you could go with green blue whatever or you maybe make a, a rainbow design up to you you can change the color at any point but i'm going to go with strong black then red black red black and i'm going to use that throughout i'm going to use the same great but you could change it of course as well click ok Next thing to do is I'm going to turn it into a smart object. If I go to image and there, adjustments, you can see none of the options are available. To make them available, turn it into a smart object. So go to layer, smart objects and convert to smart object. So now as a smart object, what you can do is you can recolor it. You can use the image menu. So image, adjustments. You can use any of those. But I'm going to go with hue and saturation. And I'm just going to change the hue there. Click OK. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add another stroke. So I can just go to Layer and Layer Style and Stroke. Now this stroke is being added to the Smart Object. 
Use the same settings as before. You can change the size, of course, if you wish, the gradient. But I'm going to go with exactly the same as before. Click OK. Now you've got that hue saturation, you've got the stroke. What I want to do, I want to convert the whole lot into a smart object. Another smart object. So it's a layered smart object. So layer, smart object, convert to smart object. So once you've got your smart object, what you can now do is you can recolor it. So you can go to the image menu and adjustments. And again, use any of those adjustments. But I'm going to go with hue saturation and I'm just going to change the thing. Now that changes the inner one as well as the outer one. Click OK. But what I want is some varied colors for the contour. Again, go to layer, layer style and add a stroke. And now this stroke is being added to the smart object. So now I've got hue saturation and the style. What I want to do is convert the whole lot again into another smart object. A lot of smart objects here. And the thing about smart objects is you can always go back and edit them at any point. You can double click into the smart object and edit the smart object. So layer, smart objects and convert to smart object. You got the whole thing as smart object. What I want to do now, I want to recolor it again. So I go to now because it's a smart object, go to image menu. If I had a stroke at this point, the stroke would end up with the same color as the previous one, which is not what I want. So just recolor it. You can just change it. Yep, I'm going to go with that. So you've got a nice green, blue, and yellow. Click OK. So you've got three strokes now. What you can then do is add another stroke. So layer and layer style. And I could, of course, continue doing this for indefinitely. I could go all the way out. But I'm not. I'm just going to stop at this point. Click OK. So you've got quite a nice contour design. You've got that lovely black. That was the reason why I had that black at the end. So I just so you can see the black lines in between. Now I'm, it's not the most amazing contour. I have to accept, but it's there is contour there, and you can see it's approximately the diamond. Convert the whole lot into a smart object, and like I say, I could continue. I could do this. Just go hue saturation, so on, so on. But I'm going to stop. So now I've got my action. It's a very basic action. Three or four steps repeated over and over again. Two steps repeated over again. Now, what I can do, I can duplicate that smart object. So I can fill the entire screen with the smart object. I can also use it maybe as a source for a pattern. So I can remove the background. So just go to the layers panel and edit and define pattern. Click OK. Now go to a completely fresh document. So go to history and then just go back. What you can then do is edit and fill. But of course you can, as I've created the action, I can actually use the action to create additional designs. So I'm just going to select that pattern there. So pattern and custom pattern. And I'm going to go with symmetry fill. Make certain the script is on. Symmetry fill is set. Click OK. Otherwise, Photoshop will just use the default pattern. Click OK. And then you can see, now I'm using that. I've got eight for the symmetry type. You can go with seven, six. You can go through a whole, there's a whole about 30 odd different types and try them out. You can also change the translation width and height. And we've got color randomization there as well. So you can create all kinds of pretty unique designs simply by doing that. And then you can apply effects to that and much, much more.
Or you could, of course, create it on a layer. And as a layer, you can then apply, of course, the action. So it doesn't have to be a custom shape. It could just be a standard layer. Now, that action can be applied to any of these shapes. Some work better than others. I say it probably works best with a really nice solid design. Something like a like that, one of the people shapes. So again, I'm using a vector design. I'm not going to fill the entire screen with it. I'm just going to create fairly small in the center. Again, using gray. Play the action. You can now see the contour based on that person. What you can of course do, it's a, it's a standard design. It's a, you can rotate it, you can transform it. So you can go to edit and scale. Or maybe rotate, warp, distort. The reason I'm actually shrinking it a bit because what I want to do is apply another action to it. So it's just a standard design, a smart object. You can have additional actions applied. You can, of course, like I say, go to the edit menu and transform and warp or distort. Up to you. So you warp the shape in all kinds of ways. Now with that action, you can go, so with that selected, you can just play it. And that will add yet another contour to it. And you can apply it again, do it three or four times. Or you can duplicate the design, holding down the Alt or Option key to drag, and create multiple copies. Now you can recolor it as well. Of course, it's a smart object. You can add additional colors to it. So you can go to hue and saturation, image menu adjustments, and recolor that. And that will change just for that smart object. None of the other smart objects will be altered. You can also apply filters. So filter and liquify to smart object. And they're editable. You can go to the layers panel and remove them if you wish at any point. So you can warp that design, click OK. You've got the warped design there. And I say you can go to the layers panel, deselect it if you don't want that. I'm just going to go with completely fresh document again. And you can apply it to any shape or layer. So there's just a simple ellipse, a circle, apply the shape, the action. And again, you can see the problem with that. In the sense that it's not really a perfect, I mean, if that was a really good contour, that would not be with those sort of like indentations all the way through. However, it's still a dramatic design that you can use over and over again. And again, you can do exactly the same as before. Hold down the Alt or Option key and drag to duplicate to fill your design with multiple copies. Or you could use it as a source, again, like say for a pattern, or maybe a brush stroke. What you can also do, you can edit the source custom shape. Now you can't edit it at the moment, because it's a, it's a smart object. But you can double click on the design. Go to the layers panel. You can change that circle. So just go over there, yep, to the layers panel, and there's a little thumbnail on the left. So just go there, double click on that. Once you've done that, you can then go and edit it and double click again, double click, double click, all the way through. And you'll notice what happens it opens PSB files. And you can go all the way down to the final PSB file. 
and you can't go any further. So it won't let you. But what you can do is you can go like to the direct selection tool and select the individual points for that shape and just change them. Now just keep within the confines of that design. If you go over the edge, then the result in fact will ripple all the way back again and you'll end up with it being cut off. So it's best just to keep within the confines of that document. Once you're happy with that, close, save them all the way through, click, save. Takes a few seconds to process, close it, save. And close, save. And you go back. Now, everyone now will be all, they will all change because they're all based on that original design. So that's a quick way of creating and modifying smart objects and the contour. What you can also do, you can go to the pen tool. You can also go to the curvature tool. So you can quickly create. That's using the shape option in the top left. Makes sense using that. Sometimes I end up using the curvature tool and it's the path option. So it makes sense it's the shape. Again, I'm using gray. You can use blue, green, fill it with a gradient. Up to you. Again, with that shape selected, run the action again. Of course, you don't have to run the action. You can go through the same steps as before without the action, but it's just a quick and easy way of regenerating it over and over again. And again, with the curvature tool, you just quickly go around, create some points. Again, click. Click the action and create yet another design. Now, they're all the same, but of course, what you can do, they're smart objects. So you can always change the smart object. Don't have to keep what's there. You can go over to the image menu and adjustments and recolor the design. Maybe add a mask. Add filters. Just go to the filter menu now and you can then create, modify that design. You can also use type. Now, it doesn't particularly work brilliantly with lorem, etc., the whole word, but it works nice with single characters. It does work with the complete sentence, but it just looks nicer with the individual characters. Again, with that selected, the L, just apply it. It's just a layer. It's a standard layer. You can just then add a very, very basic contour. Again, go back to T, the type. I always call it T, the type tool, create an E, resize that a bit. Once you've done that, go to the action again and run it. Just quickly play it and you've got a quick, again, like I said, if it was a really good contour, it probably wouldn't be so, but it, it's fairly decent. And what you can do, you can duplicate the design. Hold down the Alter Option key and duplicate it. You can apply effects to it, distort it. So you can go to Edit Menu and Transform. Maybe use Perspective. The only trouble is sometimes what happens when you do that is a massive, go real quite. So you have to use the Navigator to. Zoom, zoom out a bit so you can actually change a bounding box. Click OK. So you've got your design there. Again, as soon as you try and scale it, that bounding box will not work so easily. So it's always best to go to the edit menu and transform. And what you can also do, of course, once you've got your transform design, you can always convert that to a smart object if you wish as well. And then add layer stars to that design. Or maybe go to the filters menu, maybe the image menu, and modify that over and over again. Create all kinds of unique designs, all starting from a very basic custom shape, type layer, or any other type of layer. 
I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extra channel. Always adding lots of tutorials about Photoshop and Illustrator. Also, please add a comment or two. Always appreciated. Dislike or like. Thank you much.